to be looked at as a model. You know, and now we're going to, let's go, right? And, and I want to put, say this, because I want, I think we should think about this, Occupy Movement. All right? Don't do it. <laughs> All right? Here's a little thing about Occupy, because it's a setup. I'm telling you, it's a setup. Do you know, I mean, just a little off the hand thing. Do you know that if you own a cell phone and you were in the Occupy, any Occupy activity, they know who you are, they can identify you, they can identify you because the little RIFD chip that we don't want them implanting in us, we carry it in our pocket. <laughs> right? And they don't care if you turn it off. <laughs> no, all right, turn it off. It's still there. It, right? So they can identify anybody that was at any Occupy demonstration by their cell phone. Now, let's see, all right, so while they can identify me. But now they can look into that cell phone. Oh, look at all the people they call up. <laughs> look at all the people they send texts to. They can identify. See, now they can identify out. Right? Oh, and all those police cameras you see. Well, they, all, they can also have the, the technology, the face recognition technology is so advanced. All they do is got to get a shot of your eyes. And if you have a picture ID anywhere in the federal or state system, they can identify you to where you live. So there's a double identification. There's nope. a camera right behind you right now. Yeah, well, that's right, but they know me. <laughs> 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 we introduced ourselves here as a boy. But is it? But see, and everybody, see, and nobody's catching on. Well, that there's dangerous games going on here. You know, people better. <laughs> so I think it was a setup. All right? I think it was a setup. Because whatever they've got planned for the future, whatever's coming, and they're stepping in, stepping off in that direction. But they want to know who their opposition is. They want to identify their opposition. So they know who they're going to take first when the real stuff hits the fan. When they get real serious about what they're going to start doing, all right, they are going to know who to go after first. All right, and we're handing all right because we believe in freedom. We believe in freedom, all right? So because we believe in freedom, they're, they're getting ready to change that, all right? They're getting ready. And, and I say this because, and, and not as a fear monger, but just because I know we can out, if we, I know we can influence how things go with clarity. But I'm saying this because, see, my generation, we're on our way out. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't know that worried about us. I mean, they may round some of us up because they just don't like us, but they're not that worried about us. Right? I'm saying this, they're after you, the next generation. You're the ones. You're the ones that they're after. And don't, you know, and I'm just going to say it, and, you, you, and we'll see where destiny goes. All right? But my own personal feel, feeling is they're, they're getting ready to set up the American gulags, all right? but they're not going to call them gulags. All right? Because there are things going on in this country you know, that, that, that politically, well, I'll put it like this. The way the robbing is going on on the planet right now, the way the wealth is being concentrated, there's excessively large numbers of poor, right? Excessively large numbers of poor, right? And they're going to deal with those excessively large numbers of poor, but not in ways that, they, that we believe that they're going to. They're going to round up people, you know? I mean, you know, the largest growing industry in America are private prisons. Largest, that's the largest growing industry in America, the private prison industry. You know, how are they going to take care of the poor? They're going to lock a great many of them up and put them to work for a dollar a day, right? And make them be productive, right? And it, it, these kinds of things are coming. You know, and people need, people really need to start thinking about what's going on, all right? Because we're never going to outfight them. This is not going to happen, all right? But they want us to believe that we have a chance if we fight them, all right? Reality is, we can help think them, but they don't want us thinking about that. They do not want us to think about that, so they will push emotional buttons because they know that we've been emotionally primed to emotionally react. And if we emotionally react, we're not thinking clearly and coherently. All right? Have you ever had an emotional outburst and then later think, well, I wish I'd have said this or I'd have said that? That's me. So you're not thinking clear, right? I do it all the time. <laughs> So people don't take me serious anymore. <laughs> you know? yeah. But it's for us to take the responsibility. 
to recognize that we're human beings, take the responsibility to understand if we claim any spiritual identity to anything, to take the responsibility that we can only show that spiritual, I mean we can most effectively show that spiritual consciousness by being conscious of the power of our intelligence and how we use it. Yeah. And we start to take those responsibilities upon ourselves. Right? Then we can change this dynamic. And that's reality. I mean, on an individual basis. On just individually. Make the decision to think as clearly and coherently as possible. And see how it changes <laughs> your individual life. Right? Because the thing about when we think, we project electromagnetic energy. Electromagnetic. So if we're tossing low self-esteem, the chaos of low self-esteem and its different fragments as a part of our consciousness, then that's what we're going to attract. If we're putting clarity and coherency out there, then that's what we're going to get back. That's the part, that's the part of the power of the people they don't want us to understand. That we can help. I mean, theoretically, if everyone got up tomorrow and said, I will not enable what I know to be alive, it will all change. And, to, and so that the occupiers don't misunderstand, I'm not picking on anybody, right, or doing any other thing like that, but I do think that this needs to be thought out before we call people out to do stuff, right? And because I'm saying this because, you know, I think that it's time for the next generation, well, our generation, but I think it's time to think in the terms of non-cooperation versus civil disobedience. I think civil disobedience is a trick. I think it's a trick, it's a trap, all right, and it's how they tag us with the magic markers, all right, so that they can identify who we are, all right? They, they have the electronic know-how now to do that. So I think we should be careful. I'm not saying there shouldn't be any public protest, but I but we should not build whatever it is we're looking for through that, because if we ha if we use our intelligence clearly and coherently, we'll see it doesn't work. If we want to be honest and authentic, it doesn't work. So we need to recognize that. Because civil disobedience, whether it's violent or non-violent, whether it's with permission or not, is cooperating with them. Because it's a part of the lie they tell us that by, by that public protest we can have an influence. So we're cooperating with them. All right? But we're cooperating with them down to the point of we buy magic markers to make our signs. We buy our little bottles of water. We buy, we buy our health food. Or we buy our junk food. You know? And then we, go, we buy gas. We buy plane tickets. We buy whatever to get to the demonstration. All right? So we're, economically, we're cooperating with them. If we, and if we do it with permits, we're cooperating. If we do it without permits, then they get to come and practice war games on us. All right? Police tactics so they know how to do crowd control. All right? So it's about non-cooperation. To think in terms of non-cooperation. If everything is designed that what I, when I do this, I, I'm feeding the energy or economics or something into their system, then it's time to think, how do I not cooperate? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it can be from, like, as an example, of all the time and money that went into the Occupy movement, everything that's defined as energy, time, money, any of it, that went, that went into the Occupy movement, had been put in to telling the American people, look, let's get together, this is about economics, let's get together and not spend any money on one day as a unified force, as a unified group. Let's not spend any money on one day. The objective being get one third of the population to do it, and they can't ignore you. Cannot be ignored. Because was not the Occupy movement basically in reality about middle class being made poor? I mean, this is reality. All right? So, I mean, so if it's about economics, then think in different terms. But going out there, you know, because if I was, if I was the bad guys, I'd have created the Occupy movement just to find you. <laughs> it's something because they benefited. What did the occupiers <coughs> get as a benefit out of it, other than the emotional rush of being able to emotionally bent? But when we stand here, where we're at now, what was gotten out of it? See, we need to be able to examine and look at our activities, right? But if I go and say this to most places, see, people are going to get off, they're going to get defensive. They're going to hear what I'm saying. But, you know, but, but I'm putting it out there for those that do. <laughs> and whoever gets it, gets it. But I ain't non-cooperation. And let's go to another level, because the level that I'm most concerned about on non-cooperation is, I think, an act of non-cooperation is to think for myself. I think a level of non-cooperation is this low self-esteem. Get over that stuff. 
All right? No, no. See, I grew up in a generation where self-esteem wasn't even a term, so I have a hard time relating to it. Self-esteem. <laughs> right? You know? We didn't talk about self-esteem. You know? They put that in, and then they start programming. They're generating, well, yeah, low self-esteem. No, man. You're messing with me. <laughs> That's what the problem is. Oops. <laughs> so we need to look, all right? Like ourselves. Understand there's nothing wrong with us. You know, and the things that are, that are distorted, well, if we recognize rather than judge, we can alter, we can balance that distortion stuff. To like ourselves, right? To not use pride as our way through. To truly be grateful, right? To truly be grateful for what there is to be grateful for. Don't let them lead us around by our pride. Understand the difference between humility and pride. Because humility and pride, they just can't live together. I'm sorry, they can't live together. I come from a spiritual, I still have enough of my spiritual memory left to know that it, my humility was a danger, all right, to the religious pride. That's why they went after us. See, so these are things, we need to start thinking about things that we just have refused to think about. You know, and that's just, you know, and, and, and about the sexism stuff, I'm going to toss this out there too, you know. For the women, don't blame it all on the men. Women raised us. So everybody's got a role in this. Reality. Everybody's got a role in this. See, in this whole division, this whole gender thing. And I'm not making excuses for anybody any way across the deal. All right? But if, but if the man grew up bad, <laughs> or whatever all that stuff is, he had a mother. You know, I hear all these jokes about penis and man and that, you know. But, but every penis... Every woman grew the penis <laughs> before it came out here. So let's all take some responsibility on what's going on as human beings rather than allow, allowing them to make this other thing. That, anyway, now before I get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm desperate. I want us to think. Think about anything, right? I won't even go into democracy. Um, okay, well, I'm going to read a few more of these. And, uh, quit. <laughs> but, and, and, but anything that I said that makes sense to you, right on. If I didn't make sense to you, I don't want to hear about it. Right? <laughs> 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 because we're just butting heads because if I didn't make sense to you and you're going to come tell me about it, then you're not making sense to me. <laughs> well, senses, I mean, they talk about the sixth sense. I think the sixth, I think common sense is the sixth sense, because we all have it. I think, so. that's, I think that's our sixth sense, but we'll go in, that's another time. Uh, is your you, did you ever have one of those days when you just lost it and it was too much trouble to find it again? Or one of those days everything goes right, you want it to never end because you never know when that day will come back? While whatever's going on is going to go on and there's not much you can do, except go with the choices of laugh or scream. With hysteria and euphoria battling for territory and the battleground is your you, in a reality of no such thing as non-combatants. Feeling like the victim of a victimless crime wave and whatever that's all about, viewed through the shame in other people's eyes. Mixed in what you can't take, can't take back, the scenes of a lifetime replayed asking your lucky stars for some lucky to thank. And remembering what remembered remembers almost always seems out of control when some forgetting refuses to be forgotten. And a story of all good things must come to an end with without sinners casting stones, just about any temptation is worth succumbing to. And in the transparency of karma and original sin, whatever we say it is, is following us does nothing last forever mean it does or doesn't? Who thought up salvation and redemption and why? Who are they that they needed that? What is it that they see or don't see in themselves? Using guilt trips like hits of drug hallucinations, conceptualizing judgment days into every day as a judgment day on the rampage, like an enemy waiting to ambush us in our minds. Madnesses of sane. Been praying for some protection from the madnesses of sane men. 
Crossing the borders of insane sounds like saying is farther insane, like versions of in intensified saying with madness as part of the normal. Cold blooded against warm blooded, armed with civilized rationalizations. Competitive edges used like swords, inhumanly cutting through humanity. Using smiles as lies, fronting hollows, sounds of what's in our best interest, then they turn excuses into reasons to put on their scariest violent mask. Fear serves them like chattel slave, chains in the minds rattling invisible. Emotionals don't know what to feel, leaving feelings feeling abandoned. And a pervasive of spreading wounds, scarring imaginations with isolations, but not good enough hidden behind pride's uncompleted needs to be borrowed. Feeding the madness of sane men, it's like the frenzy of their cannibalism is hidden by their definitions of sanity. Profit before people, industrial wealth, 2% own 70% or something like that. They make the rules that say it's right with the lie of all's fair in love and war. As they radioacted the future's child in a detachment of ancestor realities, disconnect from the past and future, the spirit lost to homicidal self-loathing, running rampant in the subconscious, feeding the madnesses of sane men. Well, anyway, I'm, this is a close with this been given, but uh, I appreciate the energy, right? Mm -hmm. We all brought our own energy here and on it. I like to think when we leave, see, we're energized in a different way. That's what it's all about. And, and I, I'm not asking, I don't, I don't want anybody to believe a word I said, right? Because I, I don't need that, right? But if you think about whatever was said, then that's really what it's all about. Right? I'm not trying to get you to like me or not like me. I don't want you following me. Just stay the hell away from behind my back. <laughs> Bad things can happen. <laughs> but thank you for paying attention. It's called Ben Giving. Enjoy your day. Create a way. Sunshine and rain go together while come and gone play tag with yesterday and tomorrow. In and only forever lasts forever. Forever is here in this moment. What we do with it is up to us and what we think of ourselves. We can carry our light lighter or we can carry our light heavier. We can smile and or we can cry. We decide which feelings to use. We are how feeling better feels or what feeling worse can feel. How low down low down can get needs our cooperation to play. While our birthright of resilience gives us the creativity we need to create positives to stay even with negatives that keep adding. Fuel to the fire, energies to burn, can be used to lighten the darker. See clear, we are our own torches. Everything that's good is still good, and we've been given the gift of life. Anyway, thank you. Thank you.